morning. <clears throat> Great to see so many of you joining this morning. We'll give it a little bit of time to let everyone get on the call. This is also on Facebook Live, if anyone would rather watch it on that. I don't know what the difference is, but that's an option. Really no um, particular props that you need unless you've got a yoga block and perhaps a blanket. We are gonna end today extra bonus with just a little bit of yoga nidra it ties in beautifully with the theme that we're doing today so yoga nidra uh, yoga sleep is great if you have just a little pillow for under your head and maybe something to cover your eyes um, a scarf or a light towel or something like that so i'll give you a little bit of time if you want to grab those props How's everyone doing? I'm gonna give it just one more minute because I see people keep jumping on. Happy Saturday, it's sunny finally. I guess it was sunny yesterday. It was really windy yesterday here, so it's great to have some warm sun. Yeah, and you can um, put little chats in that box. Great to see so many of you um, just saying good morning. I have to admit that the chat box keeps me going because I don't get any like feedback uh, after a class, even energetically. So I really appreciate everyone who uh, takes the time to say hello. All right, let's dive in. We are going to work with <clears throat> something today called Turiya, which is the flow state. Uh, this idea came to me or this idea for teaching from the flow state, uh, even though I've studied it and read a lot about it, uh, came yesterday when I was searching for morel mushrooms in the woods around my house. Supposedly this is the weekend to find morels. But what I've noticed is um, I've been doing it for a couple days and my first day I was really bad at it because I was trying so hard to find them, right? I was so focused. And then my neighbor, a funny guy named Earl said, you know, you have to let the mushrooms come to you, Betsy. And what he meant by that is you have to um, like soften. If you soften your gaze, if you don't try so hard, then suddenly it's sort of like, um, where's Waldo? If you're really efforting to find it, you can't find it, but then suddenly when you soften, boom, they pop out. So I'm happy to say I did find some yesterday and had them for dinner last night. Um, but I, the yoga tradition does talk about this flow state. And if you're a musician or maybe an artist or an athlete, and actually all of us have been in these moments of flow, and what sets a flow state apart is a timelessness, right? You sort of lose time. You lose yourself. There is a definitely in the here and now moment. There's been a lot of research done on this. And of course, I find that exciting. There's a great book called Superman written about the flow state. And what they found is um, extreme athletes. So if you really want to consistently be in the flow state, if you're an extreme athlete, athlete who... Um, sort of surfs the big waves or does the half pipe on your snowboard, they consistently get into this meditative flow state. The reason they think they consistently get there, the research, is that they're sort of on that edge of life and death. I mean, for all of those athletes, those extreme athletes, there's the potential that they could die. So they're very in the moment. Now for me, I'm not really interested in doing activities that might be, um, putting me in face to face with death. So yoga does talk about that we all have this capacity to get into this fourth state. So Turiya, first three states are the states we know well, sleep, wake, and dream. 
the fourth state is sort of this next state, sort of beyond, it's sort of an altered state of consciousness where we're in that flow, we lose time. And the beauty of the flow state is it puts us in contact with our deeper wisdom. So again, if you're an artist or a creative, uh, being in the flow state really tu tunes you into some creative energy uh, that maybe you don't have access to when you're in this frontal brain. So the research does show we have to get out of our frontal, our frontal brain. In fact, um, the flow states are caused by something called transient hypofrontality. This is a deactivation of the prefrontal cortex. And the prefrontal cortex, it's our executive functioning. It's our decision-making, our rationality, our uh, like, let me rationally think this through. We sort of have to detach from that to get into the flow state. And these frontal lobes, by the way, don't fully develop to your, to, until you're about 20 years old, which is why children, even teens, are so much better able to get into a flow state that is so much more elusive for we adults. So we're gonna see today if we might, even just for moments, it's usually for me, it's like a momentary tap in. I'm not staying there for hours on end. If you can do that, awesome. But it's like a momentary tapping in into that different sort of state of consciousness. So there's a couple ways that we're gonna practice getting there according to the yoga tradition. First and foremost, we have to be in the body. We have to be in the present moment. The body's always in the present moment. This is not a 16 year old body anymore, right? Like we get in, our bodies only know present moment. So we're gonna be into the body. There's a timelessness in the body. And then there's also this um, need to stay loose, kind of curious, soft. We might call it the law of least effort, uh, avoiding goals, sort of just letting ourselves flow. So a lot of slow flow today, and we're gonna work with the water element, which is the hips, the pelvis. Um, so let's try it, let's go for it. And then maybe you can uh, let me know later if you had some momentary altered consciousness when you were in that state of Turiya. All right, let's start hands either on the heart or palms together in front of the heart or hands resting on the thighs, thumb and pointer finger lightly touching. Take a breath. We use this first part of centering simply as the way to bridge us or to start to transition us from that really active frontal lobe mentality that as adults we mostly reside in the thinking, the planning, the judging, the analyzing, the criticizing. And already we set the intention that we allow this to soften. So as the body softens, as the breath softens, as we let go of some of the intense tension and tightness and control that we're carrying in the body, our access point to Turiya starts to increase. So already as you're sitting here in this upright position, feel some softness start to emerge, the skin softening, the face softening, the belly softening. Show up with me right now in this present moment where all that is really happening right now is awareness of the body and the breath. It's important to access Turiya that we remind ourselves that there's nothing we have to do or accomplish or reach for or perfect or enhance or fix. None of that today, no fixing, no enhancing, no perfecting. Rather we soften into this somewhat altered frequency where there's a little bit more flow and ease, creativity, and sometimes some clarity, clarity of mind about a problem that has been vexing us that we can't quite solve from our rational mind. So we're gonna stay here for five more deep breaths. Breath and body are again the ways, the easiest ways to 
come back to the present moment. So big, deep, diaphragmatic breaths. We'll take an inhale through the nose, feeling the belly expand. As you exhale, open the mouth, maybe even stick out the tongue. Four more of these. Each breath is an invitation to start to let go of the control, of the need to fix, of the need to improve. And just lets you be a little bit more connected to now. Let's do one more full deep breath in. All right, hands come together in front of the heart. Let's take a moment to receive intention. So here we are again at a space where we're being asked to not over effort or overthink. These frontal lobes are so engaged in all of us. Just soften back, stay curious, stay open. See if there's an intention that floats from the back of the head to the front of the head. Could be clarity, ease. I like to focus in on one word for the practice. You could even choose to devote this practice to someone you know and love who needs some extra life force or energy today. And such a good way to get us out of our headspace is to chant. If you're a singer, you know this. As soon as you start singing, you can't really balance your checkbook or solve your problems. So we're gonna chant and let's actually do three ohms today. You're doing it in the sanctity of your own space. No one can hear you. Really make some sound. And more than that, as you're making the sound, see if you can feel the vibration in the body. The reason we often do three ohms, first ohm is to clear the body. The second ohm is to clear the mind. And the third ohm is to clear the heart. All right, so let's take a nice deep breath in. Again, exhale, open the mouth, maybe stick out the tongue. Settle in, feel your pelvis, feel your root. Inhale to chant. Ah. Um. Now for the mind, inhale. Um, last one for the heart, deep breath in. and receive a breath. So much of this practice today is about receptivity. And then exhale, bow towards hands, heart. Feel yourself soften even more as you bow. And then slowly release the hands. Keep your gaze down, gently blink your eyes open. And then slowly lift your head. All right, we're gonna start on all fours, starting in tabletop. So you can join me there. And as soon as you arrive on all fours and tabletop, just start to move. So I've been calling this non-linear movement. There's no right or wrong. You're just starting to sway the hips, move the spine, close the eyes. In fact, today's practice might be a practice where you keep your eyes closed almost the entire time as a way to get out of your way. <laughs> Get out of your head and move more into your body. All right, I'll meet you there.
So as you start to move, again, the purpose of this beginning movement where there's no particular pose I'm asking you to go into is to start to drop into the body. Another way we sometimes talk about it is dropping into witness consciousness. We're just trying to witness ourselves. So as you start these beginning movements, witnessing, ah, where am I feeling some intensity? Where am I sore? Where am I resistant? Where's my mind pulling me? What stories keep repeating? Can I just give myself a freaking break from the stories and be in my body just for the next hour. That's really all we're attempting to do in this next hour. And so because of that, attempting to be in the body, we might have those sweet moments of being more in a flow state. The flow state would say it's good to avoid goals, which so goes counterintuitive to Western culture. No goals today, just movement, breath, being in the body, staying loose, staying curious, open to everything, expecting nothing. That's a good one, right? Open to everything expecting nothing. Let's move for one more minute here. Again, no particular way you have to move. In fact, almost letting the body show you where it wants to go versus mentally that control tower of the mind. Get out of that control tower, abandon it just for the next hour and let the body show you what it needs. Eventually, if you haven't already started to do some cat cows, inhaling pelvis tilting, heart lifting, exhale, rounding through the back. I know for myself that if my gaze is really pointed, meaning that I'm like really trying to see things just like those darn mushrooms, I was trying to see them, I couldn't find them. So I, again, I'm going to really encourage you, soft gaze, closed eyes. When you close the eyes, you start to feel more. You take out sight, which allows you to tune in to feeling more. Do two more cat cows at your own pace. You might even hold one of them if it feels particularly interesting or curious to you. And then first down dog. Again, moving in your down dog. So not a static dog, but there's some flow here. here, take an inhale, float the right leg up into the sky, and as you exhale, flow it forward into deep lunge. Lower the back knee down, just come upright. I like to walk my right foot over to the right. We're working with the pelvis, grounding, stabilizing, water element, because flow is the water element. So flowing the pelvis forward and back, been doing a lot of grounding work in all of my yoga classes and just in my own practice right now. 
Grounding isn't typically something we would do primarily in the spring months. We tend to, in spring, want to be more expansive and opening, getting rid of heavy energy. Grounding is much more a fall practice. However, COVID-19 has changed everything, as you well know. And so for most of us, our nervous systems are super jangled and out of whack right now. There's a lot more anxiety and fear. And so the grounding is really essential right now. All right, release the hands, flow back, down dog. Inhale, left leg floats into the sky. Three-legged dog, pause at the top, draw the knee in towards the chest, step the left foot through, deep lunge. Drop the back knee down, rise up. Left foot off to the left. And again, just a nice pulsing forward and back. Gaze is soft. Drishti will be really important today. Drishti is the Sanskrit word for one point. So you find one point that you can allow your gaze to settle on. Again, the mind, a busy, active, prefrontal cortex wants your eyes to sort of move all around the room, taking in all of the data that surrounds you. And instead, you are choosing to practice. Nope, just going to keep my focus at one place. All right, inhale, drop the hands to the floor, step back, down dog. And this down dog, lift the heels away from the mat. So you're coming up almost onto the toes. Heels drop over to the left. So as you drop the heels to the left, a little more stretch through this right side. Move the whole pelvis back. Come back through center. Lift the heels, drop the heels over to the right. Move the whole pelvis back. So as you press your hands down into the mat, you can get the seat and the pelvis back. Inhale back to center. Bend the knees. Slow, slow, slow. Present moment, mindful awareness, descent. Notice your knees coming down to the mat at the exact same moment in time. Walk your hands back, sway your hips side to side, maybe some big circles with the hips. Four clockwise and then switch it up, four counterclockwise. Uh, and then our first child's pose, knees wide, big toes touch, hips to heels. Now, arms can be forward, arms can be underneath the forehead, but I want this to be somewhat of a flowing balasana or child's pose. So what I mean by that, I want you to keep uh, awareness of some kind of movement, fluidity. This could just simply be the breath, that in child's pose, you're really connected to the sound and the flow of the breath. This could be just a little subtle rocking of your weight from shin to shin. This could be just a little subtle rocking of the torso up and down. We try to find just a little bit of softness, find just a little bit of flow. And then inhale, we're gonna come all the way up and sit back on the heels. Pranayama, we're doing it really early in the practice. And then we'll move into our flowing sun salutes, but we're starting with pranayama because pranayama is so good at clearing emotion, energy, thought. So if you're doing several rounds of intense breath work, you're not, you can't think, you can't be in this prefrontal cortex. So we're gonna do three rounds of Kapalabhati breath. From here, we're gonna dive into just some nice deep ujjayi breathing and then we'll come back into our flow, our movement in the body. 
So I'm sitting on my heels. I'm actually sitting on a block because of my knees. You could sit on something. You could also sit cross-legged, or if you've got a couch behind you, sit on the edge of the couch or a chair. Just make sure your spine is really elevated. So we want tall, long spine. Three rounds, 36 in each round, so a total of 108 Kapalabhati. Kapalabhati is a forceful exhale through the nose. Almost as if you're blowing a candle out with your nose. It's also a pumping of the belly. So we're starting to create some heat, some movement. It's a super purifying, clear out all the crap kind of a breath. All right, so 36, you do not have to worry about the inhale. It's just the exhale. I will say if you have untreated high blood pressure, this might not feel good. And so I would just stay with nice deep ujjayi breath or you could do alternative nostril breathing. We're gonna start with hands on pelvis, pelvis rooted, tall spine, shoulders back. Slight tuck of the chin. This just draws the sides of the throat back. We're gonna take a deep breath in. Exhale about three quarters of the breath and then pump the breath about one per second, 36 times. Five, four, three, two, one, blow out all the air. Big inhale, take a nice big breath in. Hold the breath at the top just for a moment. Retuck the chin, pull the sides of the throat back. And then exhale, awareness flowing back down into the pelvis. We pause, observe. And the reason we're doing this, it's purifying, it's energizing, it starts to disconnect us from the busy, active, analyzing, judging, criticizing mind. All right, inhale, arms float up. This time, interlace your fingers, palms towards the sky. Rooted seat, tall spine, shoulders back, tuck at the chin. Deep breath in, 36 times. Blow out a little breath first and then start pumping. Five, four, three, two, one. Blow out all the air. Inhale, press the palms of the hands up to the sky. Hold the breath, retuck the chin. Exhale, release the clasp of the hands. Slowly float the arms down. Hands rest once again on the tops of the thighs. We pause. There's a lot of vibrancy that gets unleashed when we do breath work. Breathwork also helps us access more feeling. Sort of if we've been numbed out, which is so common, especially right now, if we're kind of numbing in response to all the intensity out there, breathwork sort of helps us release some of that numbing so that we can feel more alive because that's essentially what all of us really truly want. We want to feel alive and we, we sense when we're not fully all there. All right, last time, inhale, arms up. This time, elbows bend. Hands will come down either to the backs of the arms or maybe all the way towards the shoulder blades. Your head is now naturally tilted forward, so you get that tuck of the chin, lengthen up through the back of the neck, but don't lose your connection to your root. So make sure you're really feeling your root uh, grounded down. Take a breath in, 36 more. This is our last round. of the pumping of the belly here. Keep pumping the belly. Five, four, three, two, one. Blow out all the air. Inhale, stretch those arms up. Exhale, float the arms down. Now we rest hands on the thighs. Even give a little pressure of your hands rooting the thighs down. Take a deep breath in. Moving awareness from your pelvis to your crown. As you exhale, open the mouth, big ha sound. Two more, three more.
last one, big breath in. As you exhale this time, blink the eyes open. If they've been closed, just pause, let yourself soften. Again, there's a real like releasing of stuff with breath work. Come forward and let's come to standing. All right. So moving all the way to the front of your yoga mat in Uttanasana, forward, uh, excuse me, mountain pose, feet hip distance width apart, strong legs, grounded feet, so really root the feet, nice little micro bend in the knees, thighs back, belly ribs in, tall spine, shoulders draw back. Let's even externally rotate the arms so the palms face forward. Let's just pause here, breathing expansive energy and yet grounded. So we're both contained and expansive. There's so much paradox in this practice. In fact, as we practice more, it helps us become more comfortable with all the crazy paradox in life in the world right now. All right, so feel the groundedness, feel the lift of the heart. All right, let's flow, which means we stay in the body Staying open and curious. Inhale, float the arms up. Stay with sensation in the body. Exhale, float forward, Uttanasana. As you inhale now, looking forward halfway. As you exhale, fold into yourself. Inhale, step the left foot back, deep lunge. Deep lunge, right knee is over the right ankle. Fingers ideally are in alignment with the toes. So hands aren't forward of the foot to their right in alignment with the foot. Move a little bit here. You could bounce just simply the pelvis up and down or do a little bit of flow laterally side to side. Curious about where sensation is unfolding for you. Take a breath. Slowly lower the back knee down to the mat. Walk your right foot so it's centered right in the middle of your mat. Now we do take the hands forward. Hands come way forward, maybe all the way towards the front edge of the mat or off the mat, perhaps, depending on where you're placed. Now, you've got space to open that right knee out to the side. We call this kamikaze pigeon pose. But what I want you to do is move here, pelvis side to side, front to back. You might even be able to make some circles with the pelvis. We're going for fluidity. We're working with the water element today. The water, we all contain all five elements in the body. And the water element is thought to be housed in the pelvis. So nice hip opening class today, which will not only be grounding for you, but will hopefully tap you into some of these moments of flow. So together, let's work this a minute. As you inhale, maybe lift the right knee up. And then as you exhale, can you drop your right knee towards the floor a little bit more? It's not gonna come all the way to the floor, most likely unless you have superhuman hips. Inhale, come back to center. Exhale, can you drop your shin and that right knee towards the floor? One last breath, inhale. All right, inhale, walk the hands back now so the fingers are once again in alignment with your toes. This time we had the right foot in the center of the mat. Now we walk the right foot all the way off to the edge of the mat. Before you do anything, make sure right knee is over right ankle. Now turn the right toes out so you get an la or sort of an external rotation here. Move the pelvis back, draw the belly ribs up. So there's a little rounding of cat here. Then from here, maybe come down onto your forearms or you could have a block or a bench or an ottoman. I don't know what you have around you. But in, this is called humble pose. Humbles everyone, no matter how long you've been practicing yoga. Get a little bit of movement and flow. And remember that the the key conditions of getting more into this altered flow state is being in the body, being in the present moment, and staying loose and curious. We might call it flexible consciousness, open-mindedness. 
Releasing your need right now to judge, criticize, overwork. Give up the mental gymnastics. Be in the body. All right, one more breath. Let's come out now. Right foot walks back to the center. Or, yeah, let's bring it close to the center. Hands on either side. Lift the back knee up, but we're not going to go into lunge yet. We're going to lift the back knee and just inch it back a couple inches so we can straighten the front leg. This is a variation of half Ardha Hanumanasana, but I will say, if you have really tight hamstrings, straightening your leg right now is, ah, oh, that's, not, that's not happening. So it's really okay to have a bent knee here. You're attempting to straighten this front leg, and that's why blocks underneath the hands can be really helpful. So we're opening legs, hamstrings, hips, inner thighs, inner groins in this practice today, just so we can elicit a little bit more flow. So as you're here, again, what happens if you just let your pelvis move from side to side, staying curious? We want to find a place between effort and ease and also a place between strength and flexibility. So my toes are really spread right now. They're activated. Right heel is rooting down and slightly dragging back. So I'm keeping my muscles engaged so that I can access more fluidity. So if you're super organic, super flexible, you need to work more towards strength. And if you're super tight, super muscular, but don't have much flexibility, you need to move towards more flexibility. All right, last little bonus here. If you want to, you can walk your hands way off to the right. So we're getting now into this IT outer hip area. Take a breath to soften. And then inhale, bend into the right knee. Hands either side of the front foot. Lift the back knee, pause. Step back, down dog, and with curiosity and present moment awareness, who feel your right hip, your right hamstring, your entire right leg. Can you observe the miracle that just happened as you open up that one side of the body? All right, let's do the other side. Inhale, left foot steps between the hands, deep lunge. Lower the back knee down. Take the left foot to the center of the mat. Take your hands forward. Let your left knee move out to the side. So you're coming onto the little toe side of that left foot. Your knee can be actually very close to your arm or to the midline of the body, or you might really be dropping your left shin and your left knee towards the earth. You could certainly have blocks under your hands here too, if that's good for you but allow some movement here so allow your pelvis to move from side to side or front to back keep the eyes closed tune in let your body move you instead of you thinking through how to move your body the body is a wise entity but to do this, we really have to get out of that judging critical, I'm not doing it right, there's something wrong. Give up all those neurotic mental games. I know them well, because I play them too. All right, inhale, come out of Kamikaze Pigeon. Left foot now walks way off to the left edge of your mat and toes turn out. Make sure your left knee is over your left ankle. Move the pelvis back, draw the belly up. So you're almost rounded like a cat. Then from here, see about coming down onto forearms. Coming down onto a block. Close the eyes and drop into your sensation. Let your body move. Let your pelvis sway forward and back, side to side. Staying eternally curious about, hmm, what am I feeling? When I move my pelvis a little more to the left, how does that intensify sensation for me? If when I move my pelvis back, I can get into that spot in my SI where 
I've been holding tension for a decade, right? So the moving lets you touch into these areas of the body that are constricted, tight, holding. Stay with this. Moving into the pelvis, working with the pelvis can be um, really emotional too. So just stay with yourself. And come back, left foot towards the center of the mat, hands on either side of the left foot. Lift the right knee. Move it back just a couple inches so you can start to attempt to straighten the front leg. Left heel is rooting, left toes are spread. Again, if you have some bend in that front knee, that's really okay. And you could certainly have your hands on blocks. So we have a strength in the front leg. From that strength, maybe adding some pulsing forward and back, or really opening the hips from side to side. You wanna get into the outside of the left hip. You might walk your hands way over to the left. Stay with the breath too. If you are really continuing to hear the ujjayi breath, that sound in the back of the throat, that keeps you much more here in this present. All right, bending into the left knee. Step back to down dog. Oh, and then just let your hips and pelvis move. You could even take an Elvis dog here. That feels very fitting. Elvis dog is when you bend your right knee and drop your right knee towards your left and then pull the hips back. And you repeat it on the other side. The left knee drops towards right knee. Hips pull back. Coming back to center. Let's flow a little bit between Dog and plank. Inhale, flowing forward. Exhale, back. The flow of the wave. Let your spine wave forward to plank. Exhale, back to dog. Inhale, wave forward to plank. Flow down to your belly. To you arrive on your belly, flatten your feet. Take your hands off of your yoga mat. So hands are wide, hands are tented as well, lift up. You're only gonna lift as high as feels good in your body. And if your back is tight, you take your feet nice and wide. But as you come up, then you can flow here. So moving laterally, side to side, looking over your shoulders. And all for the purpose of getting us away from this judging, critical, controlling mental state. And we certainly, it doesn't work to say, stop thinking about whatever you're most stressed about, right? That never works. So we take it from this other angle where we just focus in on the body. We focus in on the breath. And when the mind moves away from the body and breath, you like, oh, I've left the body, I'm coming back. I know, I make it sound so simple, it's really not. Uh, it's a work in progress. Inhale, float up, shoulders back, heart forward. Exhale, flow down. Inhale, flow back through all fours. Downward facing dog. Walk it out. Take your feet wide. When your feet are wide in down dog, you can really get that movement of the pelvis from side to side. Hands walking slowly back. Uttanasana forward fold. Keep allowing the pelvis to shift from side to side. Shake out the head. Little bend in the knees. Inhale, sweep the arms out to the side. Come all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart. Release the hands. Come forward to the front of the mat. If you have a block, grab a block, block, or, you know, just something stable in front of you. We're going to move into standing baby cradle and then from there flow into our sun salutes. So starting behind your block, feet hip distance width apart, strong legs, thighs back. Remember when our thighs pop forward and we tuck under? 
not only does it sort of intensify the nervous system, but it also locks up the low back. So moving those thighs back, getting a nice lumbar curve here. From here, we're gonna bend the knees even more, pressing the thighs back. So as you press the thighs back, you can accentuate this lumbar curve. Weight is coming into the right foot. You can have a chair in front of you, a wall next to you, if that helps with balance. So many people have been saying to me, I can't balance. Use a wall, you're not cheating, okay? We meet ourselves where we're at. Cross your left ankle over your right knee. So standing baby cradle. Now, left foot is really activated, toes are spread. Hips move back, belly draws in, hands to heart. So this might be your standing baby cradle right here, or you could drop your hands to the block. Some of you can get all the way to the floor, I know, or you could even wrap your arms around, sort of lock in like that. Keep moving the thighs back. Keep drawing the belly in. Now, wherever you are, come back slightly upright and cross the left ankle and shoot the left leg back through warrior three. Hands can be on the earth, by the way, or keep your hands at your heart. Bend into your right knee and step that left foot back into a deep lunge. All right, friends, inhale, rise up, hands to pelvis, float the arms up into the sky, and as you float the arms up into the sky, straighten your front leg. As you exhale, bend into your front knee. Inhale, straighten. Exhale. I'm trying to remember where I was. Yeah, it's your right leg back. Sorry, left leg is probably forward for most of you. Sorry if I confused you. My switch of angles here confused me. Keep flowing with the breath. So the inhale is the straightening, the expanding. The exhale is the descent. I really like this action of, we call it pendulation in somatic psychology. But it does, for me at least, help me tap into a little bit more of a flow state. Following the breath. All right, bring your hands down to the earth. I think I really was confused because I'm pretty sure that you have your right foot forward and your left foot back, yes? I wish I could see you shaking your heads, yes, Betsy? I keep track of it because I have an injured knee, so I'm like, which knee was it that was hurting? So right foot was probably forward on that. So let's step back to down dog. I miss everyone in the classroom that says, no, Betsy, other leg. You guys all keep me honest. Now you're not here. Oh, it's showing all of us this time how much we need each other, yes? All right, let's flow again. Inhale, flow forward to plank. Exhale, back to dog. Inhale, forward to plank. Fluid, make this as fluid as you can. Exhale, back to dog. Staying super curious about all the sensations in the body. As you flow forward to plank, hold. Weights in the index fingers. Take a breath. Exhale, how slow can you lower? How slow can you lower? As you arrive, flatten the feet. Take the feet a little wider. Again, if there's tension in the back, we're going to flow five times in and out of cobra, but with hovered hands. Engage those glutes, pubic bone into the floor. Inhale, lift the chest, hover the hands, shoulder blades together. Exhale, lower. Inhale, rise up, hover the hands. Exhale, lower. Third breath, these are fluid breaths. You might be a little bit different than me and that's okay. Count your own breaths five times, moving in and out. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, lower. Fifth breath, rise up, hover the hands, elbows together, shoulder blades together, then drop the hands, 
Take another inhale to rise a little higher, shoulders back. Let's take an inhale, exhale, lower. Turn onto one cheek. Let your arms relax at the side of the body. Uh, just let your uh, pelvis move side to side a little bit here. Rest is always as important as the movement. The space is as important as the doing. All right, bring the hands back in alignment with the chest. Come back through all fours, back to down dog. And then you're gonna make your way back to the front of the mat. So this might mean that you jump all the way forward to the front of the mat. This might mean you walk, but you get to the front of the mat, forward fold. Bend the knees, inhale, sweep the arms out to the sides, come all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart. Close the eyes, or again, let your gaze soften and settle to one point, and just pause. All right, release the hands. All right, I figured out what side we're on. If I confused you last time, I really apologize. We're gonna start again, thighs back. So thighs move back, big lumbar curve, belly, ribs pull into the body. All right, so this time it's weighed into the left foot, right ankle crosses over the left knee. Sit back, toes of the right foot are spread, hands to the heart or hands to a block or wrap your arms around the leg. Sit a little deeper, keep moving the pelvis back, find a point to gaze at on the floor. If you're folded, and maybe are even doing the bind, lift up, hands to the heart, uncross the right leg, float it back through warrior three. Hands can be on the earth, bend into the left knee, step the right foot back, deep lunge. I'm gonna stay in one place so I don't mess myself up. Inhale, rise up. We're gonna pendulate. Inhale, arms float up, front leg straightens. Exhale. So get into the flow here, inhale. Soft gaze. Present moment awareness with sensation in the body. Two more. Release the hands. <clears throat> Either side of the front foot, step back, down dog. If a child's pose feels like the right place for you to go right now, pause in a child's pose as you stay fully connected to the sound of your breath. That's your focal point, your mantra your focus. Otherwise, if you'd like to do another vinyasa, flow forward to plank, lower down onto your belly. Inhale, rise up, cobra or up dog. Exhale, lower. Back through down dog. Bend the knees. Walk, step, or jump to the front of the mat, Uttanasana, forward fold. Shake out the head. Maybe even walking the hands from side to side. Bend the knees, inhale, arms out to the side, come up. Exhale, hands to heart. 
All right, release the hands. We are gonna flow one last time. The interesting thing about this last time, we'll see how this goes, but you're not here to tell me, so you might have to tell me later. I'm not gonna give you any cues, all right? So this is just gonna be one final flow through a sun salute. If you don't know all the different components of a sun salute, you can watch me. Otherwise, you can make it up and no one will ever know. What I want us to work with in this last flow sequence is Turiya. So that means I'm in my body, I'm with my breath, I'm in the present moment, and I am working on non-judgment, right? So that, that's even the wrong way to say it, working. I am connecting with non-judgment. I am in the flow, avoiding or staying away from criticism, judging, any kind of I'm doing it wrong. Instead, I'm just with my body, letting it move. All right, friends, let's try this. I'll get you started, and we'll meet back up in standing eventually. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, flow forward. Find your own groove here. So wherever you are, keep taking your time. We're all gonna meet eventually back up in mountain pose. Oh my gosh, this is like my favorite number. <laughs> There's 133 of us. 33 is my favorite number. Practicing right now. So stay in that flow. Tapping into that collective energy as well of all of us practicing together this willingness, this collective desire we all have to open, to expand, to be more connected to this flow state where there is wisdom and clarity and answers and guidance, creativity. All right, eventually we'll all come back standing, hands on the heart, Take the hands back to the side of the body, widen the feet. We're gonna come down onto our backs for a couple cool downs. And then, those of you who have not done yoga nidra, you're in for a treat today. Sink down through your hips. Yoga nidra is, I would say, yoga nidra and meditation are really two of the best ways to enter this place of Turiya, which remember is sort of a timeless place. You lose track of time sort of a sweet thing. And so we're gonna work with uh, just a very brief yoga nidra exercise today. It's a good place to stay curious. All right, let's sit all the way back. Extend the legs forward, just bounce the knees a bit. We'll do one final hip opener and twist just in preparation for where we're headed. So if you 
actually prefer to do this supine you can, but let's stay upright. Some of you might be like, I'm ready to be on my back. So you can do this supine as well. Otherwise, we're gonna cross right knee over, or right ankle over left knee. And just add a little bit of movement here side to side. If you need more sensation for your hips, if your hips tend to be open, you compress the pose. You just move your pelvis closer to your front ankle. Close the eyes, soften the gaze. So we open our pelvis. Pelvis is the seat of intuition. It's the seat of pleasure in the body. It's the seat of emotion, or it's a seat of intuition, I should say. We have three of them, but it's a seat of intuition. And if you think about this flow state, we want things to be flowing to us, whether the second chakra is about um, finances, creativity, emotion. We want this flow constantly going. All right, let's flow our way into a twist. So keep the right ankle crossed over the left knee, straighten the left leg, right foot will drop to the floor. And then you pull the leg in towards the body a little bit tighter sit tall, take your left arm out to the side and then wrap your left arm around the knee, pull it in towards the body or hook your elbow as you twist to the right. Use the ha sound, that open mouth, just to go a little deeper to the right. back to center, straighten the right leg, bounce your knees a little bit, bend the knees again, left ankle over the right knee. And we just start here with a little bit of rocking action. Again, if you need more sensation, you will move your pelvis closer to your front heel. So you move in tighter. Ideally, we're getting the shin parallel to the front edge of the mat and the toes of the left foot are definitely activated and spread. Heart lifts here. Soften the face, drop in. Drop into sensation in the body, drop into that curiosity, that softness. Start to straighten the right leg, drop the left foot to the floor, draw the left knee in towards the body, sit tall. Right arm comes out to the side and then the right arm wraps around the leg, twisting to the left. Again, we don't have to spend lengthy amounts of time in Turiya. In fact, it's a pretty elusive state, so it's sort of hard to get there. Again, like I said, unless you're doing an extreme sport, like jumping out of an airplane or riding a massive wave. But even if we're just momentarily in Turiya, it could be just moments, seconds, just even momentarily being there allows us to come back out. We bring back some of that expanded state or that wisdom that we tuned into, even if it was just briefly, we bring it back. So often after we've been in even moments of Turiya, there's more freedom in the headspace. All right, let's come back out, straighten the legs, slowly descend all the way onto your back. As you arrive on your back, <clears throat> move in whatever way you need to. You might bring your knees in towards your chest, rock side to side. So yoga nidra often translates as yoga sleep. And all that's 
necessary really in yoga nidra is to stay with the sound of my voice and to allow yourself to stay anchored in the body. Yoga nidra is sort of that uh, liminal space between sleep and wake. It's like that sweet space where maybe you wake up in the morning, but you sort of doze back into sleep, but you're sort of half awake, half asleep. That's often a similar brain state, alpha brain state that we get into when we're doing nidra. So after you've moved in whatever way you need to, to release the practice, you settle onto your back, maybe a pillow underneath the head. You could certainly put on um, some extra clothing. Socks are always nice. And you might even cover your eyes with sleeve of a t-shirt or a scarf. And now you just follow my voice as I'm going to guide you through the body, different points in the body. Starting with your right waistline. So just letting your attention move and settle into your right waistline. Awareness now moving up into your right armpit. Feel your entire right shoulder blade descending and settling into the earth. Awareness moving down your right forearm into your right elbow. Notice the touch of your elbow on the floor. Awareness moving down through your right forearm to your right wrist. And now feel your whole right hand expansive, vibrant, observing sensations in the palm of the right hand, observing sensations in the back of the right hand. And I'm noting if you can totally focus your attention in on the right thumb and now the right pointer finger, the right middle finger, ring finger, and little finger. Once again, feeling the whole right hand filled with sensation as that awareness continues to move up through the right wrist, the right forearm, <clears throat> the right elbow, the right upper arm, the right shoulder. And then letting your attention settle right in. There's a little notch at the base of the throat. Move your awareness there. Remember the ways that we connect with Turiya is being in the body, present moment, and softness, curiosity, non-judgment, flexible consciousness. As you let your attention, your flexible consciousness move to awareness in your left waistline. You feel your left waistline. Awareness tracking up now into the left armpit. Feel your whole left shoulder blade on the floor. Awareness moving down your left bicep, left upper arm, left elbow. Feel the left elbow point where it touches the floor. Observe your attention, that curious witness, observing your attention moving down into the left forearm, to the left wrist. And now filling your whole left hand with your awareness. 
observing the back of the left hand, observing the palm of the left hand, and seeing if you can notice any particular sensation right now in your left thumb, your left pointer finger, your left middle finger, ring finger, and little finger. Awareness moving back up through the left wrist and the left forearm, left elbow, left upper arm, left shoulder blade descending and softening. And then returning once again to the notch that's at the base of the throat. We're just now moving from that notch in the throat into your right jawline, feeling the right jaw relax. And now feeling your left jaw relax. Awareness in your upper lip. Awareness now in your lower lip. Feeling the lips part slightly, the teeth part slightly. Relaxed jaw. Awareness moving into your right nostril, feeling the cool breath come in through the right nostril and out through the right nostril. Now awareness in the left nostril, again, awareness of the breath, drawing up the left nostril and back down the left nostril. Tune into the bridge of the nose. Feel the space between the eyebrows. Observe your eyelids, your eyelashes, your eyebrows. Feel your eyes settling or sinking down a little deeper into the sockets of your eyes. Observe your right temple softening. Observe your left temple softening. Feel the back of your head relaxing and releasing down into the earth. Now feel your whole body releasing into the earth, the limbs of the body, the bones of the body, settling and descending. And yet out of your descent, out of your body growing more heavy and relaxed, what also emerges is this beautiful lightness. So that while the body feels extremely still and heavy, you also observe this beautiful, expansive sense of lightness. You might call it a sense of freedom, space, expansiveness, at the same time that you're very aware of how grounded and steadfast the body is. This timeless awareness of how our body can both be heavy and light, grounded and free, strong and flexible. How we can carry both challenge and joy. 
constriction and openness, light and dark, masculine and feminine. You are big and strong and bold enough to hold it all. So take just another deep breath in and in this last moment, let yourself uh, savor or enjoy, tune into the pleasure of Turiya or being able just momentarily to tap into this fourth state. By the way, according to the yoga tradition, there's um, seven states of consciousness. So we just got to the fourth today. We know sleeping, waking, dreaming. Now we are tuning into Turiya. Take a moment to enjoy this more expansive possibility that we all contain. And then when you're ready, you can start to wiggle, move fingers, toes, take in a deeper breath. Maybe roll onto your right side. <clears throat> Come up to sitting. We'll end with hands on the heart or hands in front of the heart. Thank you all for journeying with me today. These simple ideas of just being in the body without judgment, criticalness, willingness to stay in the flow. It seems so simple and yet obviously it's more challenging. So I appreciate your willingness to practice it even for just this hour today. Start to bow towards yourself and tune into a state of gratitude and reverence for this vessel that you're in, for this body that is carrying you through this lifetime so beautifully. Namaste, my friends. Thank you all for being here, for your presence, and more than that, for just taking care of yourself. I really believe that the best work we can do is to get our own house in order, to really clear ourselves and take care of ourselves so that then we can go out into this world which feels a little unstable and crazy right now and be um, the brightest light that we can. I do believe yogis, we can really shift some things out there in the world just by our presence. So thank you all. Love you all. Thanks for your beautiful, um, your beautiful comments. I just saw someone who said, wear sunscreen. I love it. And um, I'll see you all soon. I really just am appreciating your love that comes back at me. It's helpful, it's kind of exhausting teaching to a green light. So all of your little comments make a lot of difference. And I uh, hope that you're all staying well and healthy and we'll see you soon, okay? Lots of love.